So welcome to our lesson on negative multiplication. In this lesson, we're going to try to figure out exactly how negative numbers fit into multiplication. I think the real question that I want to answer in this lesson is how exactly do negative numbers behave when you multiply them by positive numbers and by each other? To answer this properly, we're going to need to review exactly how multiplication works for positive numbers first, and then we're going to extend it to deal with negative numbers. I'm going to start by drawing on a picture of a block. To indicate that this is a positive block, I'm going to draw an arrow that points to the right. Now to begin with, I'd like to investigate the process of multiplying the numbers 3 and 4. Now the whole point of multiplication is to add things together very quickly. So when I say 3 times 4, what I really mean is I'd like to add 4 to itself 3 times. So let me start by making 4 copies of this block. Now that we have 4 blocks, 3 times 4 means that we want to add this group of 4 blocks to itself 3 times. Now as you can see here, we have 3 groups of 4 blocks and as you know that's 12. That makes 12 blocks. However, we need to look at this a little bit more deeply if we're going to get negative numbers involved as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these blocks out into a number line. Now that we have a number line, I'm going to take each row one by one and place it directly onto the number line and we'll see where we end up. So as we expected, 4 plus 4 plus 4 is just the same thing as 12. But there is another way that we could have got to 12. So let me bring back the original cubes just to show you. So last time, we took each row and then we put it directly onto our number line. But isn't it also possible to take the columns as well? Well, let's see what happens when we do that. So this time, when we go 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, that also gives us 12. And it makes sense because we've just rearranged the exact same blocks in a different way. And that means 3 times 4 can also be thought of as 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. But this time, instead of having 4 3 times, we now have 3 4 times. So instead of 3 times 4, we now have 4 times 3. And since they both equal 12, we could say that 3 times 4 is the exact same thing as 4 times 3. Because you can swap the order of these terms, we say that multiplication is commutative. Now, the reason you can swap 3 and 4 to write 4 times 3 as well is because you can always count in rows or you can count in columns, and that's not going to change the number of bricks in this rectangle. Now, because the order doesn't matter, 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3, we say multiplication is a commutative operator. Commutative just means you can swap the two operands and you still get the same answer. Now that we understand how to multiply a positive number by another positive number by using this repeated addition technique, then it's not going to be very hard to multiply a positive number by a negative number. Before, we said that 3 times 4 is the same thing as adding 4 to itself 3 times. Well, 3 times minus 4, by that logic, would just be the same thing as adding minus 4 to itself 3 times. We know that the number 1 starts at 0 and then goes to the right by 1. Well, the number minus 1 is just the same thing, but instead of an instruction to move to the right, it's actually an instruction to move left. So to signify this, I'm going to draw another block that's a different color and that points to the left rather than pointing to the right. Okay, so this block over here tells us to take one step to the left, but we said we wanted minus 4, so we're going to take 4 steps to the left, and that means we need to copy this block 4 times. Now, we said we wanted 3 times minus 4, and that means we're going to need to repeat this motion of negative 4 3 times. To show this, I'm going to need to draw another number line, just like I did in the previous example. Now, on this number line, 0 is over here unlike the other number line where 0 was over here. The reason I've put it all the way on the right is because we're planning to move left this time, and we're going to do so 3 times. So let me go ahead and copy this 3 times onto this number line. So as we can see, 
minus 4 plus minus 4 plus minus 4 is the same thing as minus 12. When you multiplied a positive number by a positive number, of course your result was a positive number. But when we multiply a positive number by a negative number, it turns out that we actually get a negative number. Now in this case, there is really one objection that you could have here, which is the fact that 3 times minus 4 allows us to add minus 4 to itself 3 times. What if we had minus 3 times 4? This raises a bit of a problem for me because it's basically saying you have minus 3 4s. So how can you even have minus 3 of anything? That doesn't really seem to make sense. But it's easily solved just by realizing that 3 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 3. So we are freely allowed to swap these two and everything should be fine. If we write it like this, I hope you can see that 4 times minus 3 is perfectly okay. We're just going to add minus 3 to itself 4 times. I can show you this by bringing back our original block and then making 3 copies of it. So as you can see here, whether we go minus 4 plus minus 4 plus minus 4, or we go minus 3 plus minus 3 plus minus 3 plus minus 3 again, you're still going to end up at minus 12. Notice that this picture is exactly like this picture, but it's really just flipped to the left. So as we said, a positive number times a positive number always gives you a positive number. In this case, 3 times 4 is the same thing as 12. However, when you have a positive number multiplied by a negative number, in this case you've actually got a negative number, and it doesn't matter what order you're multiplying the two numbers. 3 times minus 4 is going to be negative 12 in either case. Okay, so since we know how to do a positive times a positive, and a positive times a negative, I hope you can see that the last thing we need to address is how do we multiply two numbers that are negative? So we were able to be pretty logical about this case over here. But this case presents us with an immediate issue. We're saying we want to add minus 4 to itself minus 3 times. Let me repeat that. So we want to add minus 4 to itself minus 3 times. That's going to need some deeper thinking. Now this might not be obvious to you. And it certainly wasn't obvious to me the first time I thought about this. But since we already know how to multiply a positive number by a positive number, and a positive number by a negative number, it turns out that a negative times a negative is already forced upon us. We actually already know how to do this, but it's in disguise a little bit. So I'm going to show you this with an example. Okay, so I'm going to start with a statement that I think most of you will agree with. 2 times 2 equals 4, right? But if 2 times 2 does really equal 4, isn't 2 the same thing as 3 minus 1? Well, yeah it is, so let me just replace that. Okay, so 2 is the same thing as 3 minus 1. Instead of just directly writing 3 minus 1, I wrote it as 3 plus minus 1, but that's the same thing. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'd like to actually expand this left-hand side. Let's actually go ahead and use the FOIL or rainbow method to expand out every single term one by one. So once we've expanded this, we immediately see that we need to multiply a few different things together. We're multiplying two positive numbers, which we already know how to do. Then we're multiplying a positive times a negative, and we already know that 3 times minus 1 is just minus 3. And minus 1 times 3 is also minus 3. But then we have this unfamiliar term right here. Minus 1 times minus 1. We're going to ignore it for a minute though, because it's going to tell us what it should be on its own. Next we know that 9 minus 3 is just 6, minus another 3 is just 3, so let's replace that too. And now we've reached our final point here. We are saying that 3 plus minus 1 times minus 1 has to be the same thing as 4. 3 plus what number equals 4? Wouldn't that just be 1? Yeah, so minus 1 times minus 1 is just going to be the exact same thing as 1, and that's forced upon us by the fact that we decided to follow all these rules. Okay, now this is actually something I can show you graphically as well. To do this, I'm going to start off with a number line. And on the number line, I'm going to draw the number 9. Because 3 times 3 is 9. Then after this, we want to multiply 3 by minus 1, which we already agreed was minus 3. This means that we want to use 3 left blocks to go backwards by 3. Now, going left is the opposite of going right, right? So, a left block and a right block just cancel each other out. 
Now, after this, we're going to go left again by negative 3. So let's add three more left blocks and cancel them out as well. Okay, so just to recap this, we went forward by 9, we came backwards by 3, and then we came backwards by 3 more. And now we found ourselves at 3. Now, we're yet to add on minus 1 times minus 1, but we know that we want to end up at 4, so we want to be here. So this immediately tells us that minus 1 times minus 1 is the same thing as a right block. But then this leads us to another way to think about multiplication by minus 1. And this is the real takeaway I actually want you to have. So the side note I want to make is this. If we start with minus 1, which I've drawn over here, if we multiply it by minus 1 again, that's going to turn it into 1. So in other words, when you have some blocks pointing to the left, multiplying them by minus 1 seems to just flip the blocks to the other direction. And that's exactly what happens over here as well. Notice that when we started with blocks pointing to the right, multiplying them by a negative number just seemed to flip them to point left. So this is the important point I want you to take away here. Multiplying any number by minus 1 causes a number to flip around 0. And now with this, I think we've actually finished this example, and I think you're finally ready to tackle that multiplication we had earlier. Now that we're armed with the knowledge that multiplying by minus 1 causes a flip, then we should replace this negative 3 for negative 1 times 3. And this negative 4 can be negative 1 times 4. And now that we've written it like this, these brackets over here aren't really necessary anymore, so I'm going to get rid of them too. Now we can methodically work through this multiplication by starting with the number 1, and then multiplying by negative 1, then 3, then negative 1 again, then 4. Okay, so I've started with the number 1, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply it by minus 1. And as we already established, that's just going to flip it, because 1 times minus 1 is just minus 1. Then the next step was to multiply by 3, which is just going to repeat this box 3 times, and since it's going left, we're going to go left by 3. Okay, now after this we're going to multiply by minus 1 again. And as we know, multiplying by minus 1 is just going to flip everything, so negative 3, which is what we have now, is going to turn into 3. And now in a final step, we just want to multiply by 4, so that means we're just going to need to repeat this exactly 4 times. Okay, so as you can see, we also have 12 again. Now, since in every single case we're multiplying the numbers 3 and 4, all of them end up equaling exactly 12. But the only thing that differs is the sign. So let's just go ahead and summarize everything. When you multiply a positive number by another positive number, you end up with a positive number. After this, we saw that when you multiply a positive number by a negative number in either order, you're always going to end up with a negative number. And then finally we discovered that if you're going to multiply a positive times a positive to get a positive, and then you're going to multiply a positive by a negative to get a negative, then we're forced to conclude that a negative number times another negative number has to be positive. Now therefore I hope you can understand how negative numbers affect multiplication. If you have an even number of negative numbers, then you always end up with a positive answer. And if you have an odd number of negative numbers, which we had in this case, then you end up with a negative answer. And I'd say that that just about completes our discussion on negative multiplication. Thanks for watching another Trina video. If you want to say thanks, you got to show your friends. Or maybe you should just visit us at trina.org, where you can track your progress and have access to questions and heaps of other awesome stuff. Or maybe you should just like and subscribe. That works too. But either way, I'll see you next time.